there are more than 6 million CCTV cameras in the UK, more per head than any other country on the planet. Cadilla Constable 5 1 Mel. Operating 24 7, these cameras are increasingly important in catching criminals in the act. Theft, violent assaults, and drunken brawls. Antisocial behaviour to really dangerous behaviour. All of it caught on camera. I'm Nick Wallace. I've been reporting on crime for more than a decade. I'm going onto the front line to see how CCTV is helping police put criminals behind bars. Tonight, we reveal the high street bandits who'll stop at nothing to get what they want. The opportunists who'll lift anything they can lay their hands on. The gangs who'll clear shelves in broad daylight. We'll see how police are using CCTV to round up the worst of the rioters and snare persistent shoplifters. All of it caught on camera. Every year, £200 million worth of gear gets stolen from Britain's shops. The high street is at war with criminals intent on destroying their businesses. The solution is to get them caught on camera. With one in 20 retailers getting robbed, the police can't be everywhere. But as criminals are starting to discover, the cameras can. Camera control receiving. The CCTV control room in Chester. 182 cameras are sending images to this center 24 hours a day. Camera control 51. Watching out for trouble is controller Paul Hunt. The, the, the work we do is varied. No two days are the same. And I really, really enjoy my, my role and my job because ultimately, we're, you know, we're, I'm a public servant. I'm, I'm helping the people in the area that I live in. Um, and I feel as if I'm doing something worthwhile. Um, and I really enjoy it. Paul has been keeping an eye on Chester's criminals for the last 10 years. He often sees the same faces time and time again. The hardcore, the regulars, if you will. Um, and unfortunately, Chester does have them, as any city would. Um, and they do habitually re-offend. Um, you know, so there are individuals that will spot, and it's easy for us to suspect that they may be you know, out, 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 out on the rob. And today, Paul has spotted a familiar face. Camera control to Debenhams, are you receiving over? The male has just entered your location in the last five minutes. Paul starts tailing him. Late 40s, early 50s, and with short graying hair. He went in and then has exited onto Eastgate Street. I believe he may have had something down his top. Are you able to check your CCTV? He's a very well-known shoplifter. Well, previously he's committed lots of offensive shoplifting. His body language isn't right. Uh, he doesn't like being on camera. If you're a normal person, you come into the city, there's no reason for you to be aware of the cameras. But the people that are aware of the, the cameras have usually got a reason to be. He doesn't want to be monitored. There's a good chance that he has done something and he doesn't want us or our colleagues the police to know about it. Camera control receiving, Devon. I've got him on camera in this, one of the fragrance halls and it looks like he has a concealed the fragrance in his left hand side of his jacket. Camera control, Debenhams, thanks for that. Uh, we'll see if we can get a patrol to stop the mail. Camera control to any 5 1 in the city can assist us with a stopping, running down the side of the uh, play area, possibly heading towards yourselves on Abbey Street. Camera control 5 1, just for your information, he's left Baltar Walk. Um, he has been stopped by one of your colleagues over. Paul's regular has been found with an expensive bottle of perfume. He's claiming to have bought it. Now it's down to Sergeant Andy Burridge to find out. And CCTV will help him do that. Basically now the, the file will have to be built, a file of evidence to put to this male on interview and uh, he's interviewed later on today. So we're going to head to Debenhams now, pick up the, uh, the CCTV which will form part of that case. 
the store guard here has got this chap coming into the store on his camera. We've just seen him approach um, a stand with fragrances and perfumes on it. Some that fixture with a man he is. He's selected some of those, put them under his jacket, and now uh, we're looking at him leaving the store without making any attempt to pay for what he's taken. Being able to identify the usual suspects is helping to stop the tide of shoplifting in Chester. We're all pretty passionate about it um, and we all believe that CCTV works and it does work. Coming up, the extreme lengths some criminals will go to to get what they want. And in the ongoing fight against theft, shopkeepers strike back. All their friends, their family know that they're thieves. Virally hung, drawn and quartered. Chester's CCTV control room. Paul Hunt is on the day shift. That's a negative, Andy. He's tracking some suspected fraudsters. The description that was passed does match them. Yes, have a control there, just about to go up Frontier Street away from the city. Paul's taken a call from a jeweller in the high street who claims a couple tried to sell him fake gold. Uh, pocket flaps at the back. So we've, we've picked up on the male and female and we're just monitoring them and there's a police patrol en route um, who are going to try and stop them. Sergeant Andy Burridge and PC Jen Gort are on their way to intercept. Okay. The female has got sandals on, black handbag and a short sleeve cardigan on, which is grey and dark hair. Yeah, that's Zebra just coming along Frodsham Street now. High Street crime used to cost Chester retailers a staggering £20 million a year. Yeah, that's received. Keep your eye on them. Um, to help them crack down, the organisation Chester Against Business Crime has set up a joint initiative which links CCTV operators, the police and the shops. They're just going past the eight. He's coming up to Fox Yeah, they are. Everyone signed up to the scheme is linked together. Suspects can be reported, tracked and caught within minutes. Hello. Oh, yeah, just have a quick chat with you. OK, the reason you've been stopped, we just had a call from the jewellers. Uh, you've been in selling gold to them? I haven't sold nothing. I went to sell a chain. Went to sell which chain was that? Right. And what have they said in there? They said, well, they said it was no good. Right, so what brings you to Chester? Well, it's the same as what brings right. me to any other. I'll go Worcester, I'll go Stairbridge, Coventry, I'll go everywhere to play on the fruit Thank machine. Thank you, sir. On the you're a fruit machine, machine tourist? Yes, I did. Right. OK. It turns out this isn't the first time he's been busted for the same offence. Five seven four three. Dick. Can you just confirm what he's on bail for, please? In fact, far from it. You've got eight cases pending at the moment. For what? For, I've told you. We brought gold, and none of it was gold. Well, that's, that doesn't make you the offender, does it? So what if you try to do, then sell it? Yeah, well, obviously, yeah. So what offence are you currently on bail for? The Sergeant Burridge has heard enough. Let's go and take a seat in the car for me, sir. There's nothing to implicate the woman, so she's free to go. Gen camera control. Yeah, she said she's returning to the train station to get the train back to Wolverhampton. You just keep your eye on her on route to City Road, please. PC Gort wants to make sure she really leaves. Thank you, received. She'll make her way now. Take a seat on there for me. No, no I'll, I'll do your pockets, all right? The man with the fake gold is booked and searched. And the team finds something that could link him to yet another offence. It's a receipt for another jeweller's literally two hours previous to this offence. Um, I think it's in our best interest to contact those jewellers and see if he's perhaps committed the same offence of fraud within their establishment. What normally happens on some occasions is that the jewellers come back to us with a historical offence saying that they've located fake jewellery, fake gold jewellery within their stock. Um, but then we've got no leads because the evidence is gone. 
We need to go and see the jewellers now to just have a discussion about the chain itself and how he can confirm it's fake, but also to see if they've got any CCTV uh, themselves uh, of the male in the shop. Being a jewellers, I'd certainly hope uh, that they do. It turns out the jeweller's been doing his own detective work. He's already watched his CCTV and found he's caught this couple on camera before. Couples come in to sell the chain and because it was a hallmarked tag on the chain, they believed it to be gold. Now the member of staff that's in that day is actually an apprentice, so she's not quite as experienced as ourselves. This is the same gentleman that's come in today to sell the chain. So we've kind of put two and two together with it looking like a, you know, a counterfeit chain with a hallmark tag. It looked very similar to the one that came in on Monday. It seems the woman might be involved after all. She needs to be tracked down. If you see the, uh, the female that was with the male that was arrested on Frodgham Street, she will need arresting for fraud also. Yes, yes. The female that was in company with him is now wanted uh, because other information has come to light. Uh, so we're just having a look around, although we believe she's left the city, uh, to see if we can locate her. And if we do, we'll let police know uh, and we'll be able to direct them to her whereabouts. Unfortunately, the female suspect had already left town, but the man will be charged with fraud. Thieves can be a devious lot. They'll use any number of techniques to get what they want. Whatever they want, they'll take. People who steal may think that shoplifting is a victimless crime, but the cost to you and me is an extra £100 on our annual shopping bill, and the cost to a small retailer can be much more. If you take that, you've literally directly hit me and stabbed me straight in the back. Stallholder Phil knows only too well what it's like to be targeted by shoplifters. We had one guy, 22 bracelets in one hit, £220 in one hit. Unfortunately, he never got caught. Phil's shop wasn't just targeted once or twice. In fact, Phil was hit roughly 20 times in the space of six months. These guys, they make your blood boil. They are, they're invasive. It destroys your faith in people, you know. 99.9% .9 of people are honest. 1% is not but it's the 1% that we have to count that every single person out there is a shoplifter. From the little old granny to the little boy, is he a shoplifter? Phil became suspicious of everyone. To deter the thieves, he spent 800 pounds on installing his own CCTV. It didn't stop them, but it did catch them on camera. Phil's footage shows just how brazen some of the shoplifters were. That little kid who steals from you doesn't realise his implications of what he's doing. All he sees is a bracelet. And that's what he's going to take. But the knock-on effect of that is tremendous. Feeling he was being robbed blind in Bristol, he shut up shop and relocated to the seafront in Western Supermare, taking his CCTV cameras with him. Here we have basically a shoplifter. But a change of location only meant a new lot of shoplifters. I love the smile on her face when she actually spots what she wants to steal. Oh look, something shiny. Yeah, she picked up one. Now she picks up two, and then she straightens them all out again, just to make sure that we can't see it's gone. She's professional. 
she knows exactly what she's doing and how she's doing it. Phil decided it was payback time. Using the evidence caught on camera, he's created a wall of shame in the hope of identifying some of the thieves as well as putting off other shoplifters. He then took it one step further, posting his footage on Facebook and YouTube. It's my own way of getting back at them, so all their friends, their family know that they're thieves. OK, now this one. Within 24 hours, we'd had 2,500 hits on it. Virally hung, drawn and quartered. Phil's cameras haven't stopped the most determined criminals. And there goes the necklace, here it goes. But at least he can expose them. In his hand, and bye-bye necklace. I hate the little shit. I detest them. I think they... Why do they do it? Why do they attack the small person? Because they don't have any consideration for anybody else except themselves. I believe that possibly that uh, more exposure of these people would actually stop a lot of shoplifting. If you could actually have a big, big thing in the middle of the high street with the latest pictures of the latest shoplifters, the shoplifters aren't going to go into town. And if they don't go to town, they're not going to shoplift them. Tempting products on display are easy pickings for thieves, especially when some criminals go for the gung-ho method. Grab what you can and run like hell. One gang took that idea to a whole new level, steaming in en masse and grabbing as much as they could. It was a hit and run that no one at this mobile phone shop was prepared for. The same lot hit 42 different stores in the southeast and got away with £150,000 worth of gear but not for long. CCTV evidence helped convict eight of these gang members for conspiracy to burgle. High street criminals can't always be caught in the act, but more and more of them are being caught on camera. Like this brazen gang, which took robbery on the high street to a whole new level. This lot used a bulldozer and they got away with £34,000, as well as the cash machine. Another gang caught on camera in Hampshire used even more extreme tactics. Unbelievably, they decided to pump a mixture of oxygen and propane into a cash point on a petrol station forecourt. Amazingly, £20,000 survived and scattered across the ground. They got away with three and a half grand, but CCTV footage helped nail them. Hello, can I help you? In the fight against high street crime, the CCTV control room is the first line of defense. At West Orchards in Coventry, CCTV controller Andy Gould has 85 cameras to help him watch over three floors of busy shops and cafes. With thousands of people coming into the centre every day, tracking the shoplifters is a game of cat and mouse. Often, it's the same characters again and again. We, we get to know people now that are coming in that, are, that have committed crimes in here. So if we see them coming in the doors, we'll go down and direct them straight out again because they're not welcome in here. And today is no exception. Control to all Zulus and an IC1 male blue top, large build, going body care, known shoplifter. Can we attend? Excuse me, guys. Can you make your way to body care? Excuse me. Yeah, we've got a guard on his way in now. Security guards are called and get to the shop as quickly as they can. Trousers, uh, blue jacket, large build. Andy is guiding them in. Excuse me. Yeah, he's been deterred in the co-op from attempting uh, to steal, so if he's a bit suspicious, we'll direct him straight out. Within minutes of being spotted, this regular is ejected from the shopping centre. They, they recognise him, they've uh, spotted him um, trying to steal something and he was deterred by staff, left, escorted out and he came straight over here, so... What the PCSOs will probably do now, take his details and tell him to make his way out of town. Five, all okay in there. Already banned for shoplifting, today it seems he was trying his luck. Tell me, what's the deal here? They're just doing an ID check on him. 
is going to be followed from this point in the town centre all the way until he gets out to a certain point and then hopefully we won't see him again in the city centre today. So he's a known convicted shoplifter. Yes. I'm going to see if I can have a quick chat with him. Hang on a sec. Excuse me, mate. Do you want to have a quick chat on the camera? No, I thought, I thought that camera was recording me for because of these. We're it? filming what these guys do for a living. Yeah. And I saw that you came into the, the place and you were just kicked out straight yeah, away. they stopped me, yeah, they stopped so, me. But you haven't nicked anything? No. I you've, been, you've been robbing at other places? Well, sort of, yeah. They're, but were you going in there to, to try and rob something? No, I was going there just to look around, I don't know. <laughs> but you can see, yeah. if you're wearing a coat like that, they're immediately going to assume that you're on the rob again. Because yeah. it's a lovely warm day. I know, yeah, when I first came out, it was a bit... You know what I mean? It wasn't this hot. Lift something. Yeah? Yeah. Be honest with us, where are you going to try and lift something? Might off, yeah, might off. So you can see why they're doing the job? Yeah. All right, mate. The guys at Control have made exactly the right call. Coming up, criminals roaming the streets and wholesale looting. It doesn't get bigger than the London riots. And catching the guilty would be down to what was caught on camera. It was just carnage. You, you, you know, you feel numb. Cameras all over the country are catching criminals in the act. And what's caught on camera can provide the best evidence for bringing these criminals to justice. In the summer of 2011, London streets exploded into violence. Large numbers of people took to the streets across the UK, robbing, looting and battling with police. Arresting them at the height of the riots was virtually impossible, but being able to mount a case against them afterwards was down to CCTV. The police collected every scrap of camera footage they could find. From every street corner, shop and mobile phone. We had an, over 200,000 hours of CCTV recovered. It's been described as the biggest single investigation ever set up. There's a total of 4,170 offences committed linked to the disorder. In London, the Met started Operation Withern a dedicated team of officers determined to use evidence caught on camera to bring the worst of the offenders to book. One of the most dramatic images of the riots was the fire at the House of Reeves furniture shop, which spread to the whole block. Firefighters were powerless. House of Reeves had stood on this site for 145 years. On a single night, five generations of a family business was destroyed. And this is it. This is the House of Reeves. This is the old store, what's left of it, where it all burned down. Brothers Graham and Trevor were left with no business and no hope of finding the people who did it. It was just carnage. You, you know, you feel numbed. You're just numb. The whole place is gone. It was just finished. I thought there was no chance of them getting a conviction or getting evidence or getting anything. The Operation Withen team faced a monumental task. They started with the CCTV on the street. Immediately, they hit a problem. The hard drive linked to a camera directly opposite the shop was water damaged. They were told the images couldn't be recovered. But there was a surviving camera on the footage, they spotted a man in a red hoodie walking away from Reeves around the time the fire broke out. He was also seen by eyewitnesses who said he was the arsonist. The hard job would be proving it. He was picked out by other CCTV cameras with a petrol can. Officers needed to find out what he'd been doing in the hours leading up to the fire. He was also caught on camera directing other looters to a department store, as well as going in himself. He was so distinctive, his size, the clothes he was wearing, his gait. 
having watched hundreds of hours of footage of this suspect, you, you, you begin to get a real feel for them and you can pick them out even from a grainy or fuzzy image. But CCTV still couldn't give the police a clear image of his face. Then came a breakthrough. An undercover reporter was filming a few streets away from Reeves and caught looting a supermarket, the man with the red hoodie, looking directly at the camera. The police thought they had their man, but they still needed to put a name to the face. An appeal in the local paper named the man in the red hoodie as Gordon Thompson. The evidence caught on camera was enough to charge him, but they still needed to prove he was the person who torched Reeves. Then the officers got some vital news about the water-damaged camera drive, and everything changed. We took a phone call from a technician who said there was pictures coming up on the screen of people outside a furniture store. At that point, we knew that this may have potential evidence for us, and it did indeed contain the critical piece of evidence of Gordon Thompson leaning in to the furniture store and setting the light. This it was the icing on the cake for us. Gordon Thompson changed his plea to guilty. He's now serving 11 and a half years. In the immediate aftermath of the riots, there was a flurry of arrests helped by crimes caught on camera. Operation Withen became the largest investigation of public disorder ever conducted in the country. Tracking down those responsible for the worst offences has taken thousands of man hours. The cost of the riots could end up being more than 300 million pounds. The damage brought hundreds of businesses to their knees and five people died. It's no wonder the police were determined to catch those responsible. One of the most complex investigations for officers on Operation Withen happened in East London. This CCTV footage shows two men in blue hoodies kicking their way through a convenience store's metal shutters. Inside the shop was booze, cigarettes and cash. The looters were determined to get in. When they finally got in, others streamed in behind them, causing £80,000 worth of theft and damage. The owners who'd run the shop in the community for 11 years were distraught. Everywhere, complete mess up there. I didn't even step in. I didn't even know, go in. I just went to this next to shutter and it just looked and come back to the van and start to cry. The first job for Operation Withen was to gather the CCTV evidence. Officers watched hours of footage trying to trace the men responsible. Finally, they had a breakthrough. Among the many images taken by press photographers, officers spotted this, a man with blood running down his leg. The cops soon realised this was their suspect. But finding out his name was another problem altogether. They trawled through footage in the area and finally the last piece of the puzzle fell into place. A picture of the same man being helped into an ambulance. Officers chased up the paramedics and were given his name and number. With the weight of evidence so strong, he pleaded guilty and was sent to prison for 18 months. The second suspect hasn't been caught, but officers are still sifting through footage, determined to track him and the other rioters down. Footage caught on camera remains crucial in helping the police catch up with criminals, but picture quality remains a problem. Grainy images made it tougher for officers piecing together footage after the riots. But CCTV technology is developing fast and retailers are leading the way. Like the control room in West Orchard's shopping centre. 
It houses the very latest in CCTV technology. They've spent £50,000 on high-definition equipment, including new Avigilon cameras. Mr. Yoshka, Charlie, Charlie. Every inch of the shopping centre is now covered and monitored. Security officer Andy Gould has 86 cameras feeding 70 screens. So how useful is this CCTV system? It's brilliant. It, since we've been updated to the, the um, HD and the digital stuff, it's fantastic. Caught you walking around earlier on. I'll play it for you. Are oh, those my shoes? That's you, just coming in shot now. So if I zoom in on that now... So we've there... We've That's got... an amazing shot. From such a wide shot that you start with, you can go in so close and not lose too much of the yeah. quality. And if you've got a grainy picture of someone leaving a property, you might as well just draw a stick, stick person. Yeah. But with the HD, we've got good visuals. We can see them 100% and identify them. For Andy, this technology isn't just helping him catch people in the act. It's proving invaluable when it comes to spotting the usual suspects. Control to all Zulus. Yeah, I've got them on now. Now, known offenders can be intercepted quicker than ever, hopefully before they've nicked anything. What's your policy when it comes to dealing with criminals? It's about pushing the crime away from the West Orchard Shopping Centre. And your goal here isn't necessarily to catch a crime being committed, it's to identify a troublemaker and exclude them from the shopping centre. Absolutely. We want to ensure that people feel that this shopping centre is a hard place to steal from. And hopefully then people will go elsewhere. Yeah, you don't want them in the building because if they're not in the building, they can't commit a crime. Absolutely. This technology is helping reduce crime. But I want to find out how quickly it can help the West Orchards team find a potential shoplifter. What have you got down in here? Phone. I know you've got something in your back pocket. This is James Brown, a sleight of hand expert and my partner in crime for this op. He's playing the shoplifter and hoping to go unnoticed. I'm in the control room with security officer Hugh Ovens. He's got a brief description of James and thinks he's going in solo. But James has brought his friend Ravi along to throw everyone off the scent. There are hundreds of shoppers in the centre, but the team still reckon they can find James in less than 10 minutes. The mall has 18 entrances, 45 stores, and Hugh has his 70 screens to monitor. Bring in certain locations um, where there's groups of people. You know what, I know exactly what James Brown looks like and I'd have trouble picking him out the, the amount of cameras you've got to choose from. Sooner one to control, ever. Okay, yeah, are all the units on their, uh, on their positions, ever. Yes, sir. Thank you. The key person now is the controller. There's obviously a number of eyes on the floor, but essentially there's, there's over 70 eyes, cameras, which are going to do a lot more work than we can physically. But right height, slim build, right age. Uh, the two of them have been walking around uh, the centre. We just want to see what they're doing. They've spotted him. They've been walking around, they've been on all levels of the car park. They don't seem to be doing much. They're not shopping, but they're looking at what's going on. All right, guys, well, I think I better tell you that is James Brown, who's walking around with his uh, jacket over his shoulder. Yeah. So if you want to tell Steve that was a great spot, that was eight minutes before he picked him up from the floor. Can I ask you, is your name James Brown? It is indeed. The team don't take their eye off the ball for a moment. Whilst James is being stopped, Hugh spotted a real shoplifter. Zulu 1-1, one, one. Zulu 1-1, one, one. can you go to uh, yes, yes, Claire's? Go to Claire's now. now. The person takes something from Claire's. We don't have a description yet. He's out the shop, gone uh, towards Smithford Way and uh, turned left, left, left. The man is quickly caught and taken to the shopping centre's holding cell. Once I've searched them, they'll then identify the property that belongs to the shop and uh, he'll be spoken to, his details obtained and the PCSOs will check them out. Two times glasses. At the value of eight pounds each. Yeah. One more pay, one more pay, one more pay. It's irrelevant, you made no attempt to pay. Sit down. 
Do me a favour. Sit been, down. I ain't been no problem. No. Sit down. Come on, be. Sit down. Sit please, down. Sit down in the chair. Sit down, please. Thank you. Are you, uh, you now? Sit down. Right, right. you'll need to pay attention back, to what so. this man's going to tell you now because it means you won't be able to shop within the West Orchard Shopping Centre. I have no money in my bottle. I know you have right. money, but you should have thought about paying before you exit the store. Okay, okay, okay. All right. You have now received a 12 month ban. Okay. All right, we've got your picture. So as soon as you come in the centre, we'll have you, we'll have you recognised and we'll come and get you. Okay. okay. So you don't come back. You been drinking, Malka? Yeah, I've had again. Right. Morning. Well, yeah, morning. vodka's not a good breakfast, is it? <laughs> mate? Vodka's not a good breakfast, mate. Well, I'm done to shake your hand, mate. Make your way out, don't want to see you for 12 months. OK, where you go. Zulu 2 to control, just leaving stair one. That way. Yeah. Make your way out of town. Just away from West Orchards, that way. Okay. Balka. That way. Yeah. 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 Coming up. Hello, it's the police. Can you come to the door, please? The petty criminals who can't break the habit. Caught on camera, shoplifting pays for drugs, or alcohol, or both. And some thieves come armed with more than intent. Across Britain, if you've got your own shop, you've most likely got your own CCTV cameras. Corner shops stocking booze, cigarettes and a till full of cash are all too often targets. Owners never know who's going to come in next. One shopkeeper on Merseyside was put through a horrifying experience. At 10 o'clock at night, three masked men burst into his shop, wielding steel chains and a meat cleaver. He was overpowered, beaten and slashed, leaving him with a gaping wound on his head. It was a terrible experience, a nightmare. A lot of blood, more than half a litre. More than half a litre, very hard. Milton needed 10 stitches in his head. The attack has left him scared to go out at night. After 9 o'clock, I, I feel unsafe forever. And if anything will happen, I pray the court will not happen again. The police are still trying to identify and catch the armed robbers caught on Milton's CCTV. High street crime isn't always reported to the police, but when it is and criminals are caught on camera, the same old faces keep turning up. Thank you for, uh, for coming today. In Rotherham, officers are getting ready for an operation to swoop on some of the usual suspects. So today we're going to utilise four teams, two Oscar Yankee teams and the town team to get a number of suspects in. So we're doing everything we can to get people uh, behind bars where they need to be, where they can't commit crime. Officers are heading out to knock on some doors across the city. This is the CCTV of just one of the suspects they're looking for. The man can be seen stealing washing powder. He went back to the same shop to nick more three days in a row. The image may be grainy, but officers know who he is. He's a heroin addict who's only been out of prison for three months. PC Dave Law hopes to find the suspect at his dad's house. Morning, sir. Morning. You all right? Yeah. Uh, my name's Dave Law. I work for uh, police at Rotherham, obviously. Yeah. Um, can I come in and have a quick word with you? Yeah. Is Michael in? He came round here last night. Did he? But, um... but he's not here now. All right, fella. See you later. Thank you. See you. Bye bye. Bye. 
a lot of these criminals live uh, a fairly transient lifestyle and uh, they move about all over the place. The one good thing about them is that they do tend to commit crime and live in the area where they're committing the crimes. Sooner or later, um, we catch up with them. But in this case, it might just be later. She don't get up well about half nine, ten o'clock. It's so difficult to up against this time in the morning. Across town, PCs Rachel Sparrett and Rich Allett have spoken to their suspect in advance and she's agreed to meet them. She was caught on camera going into a hairdresser's with two men. While she distracted staff, the thieves stole three sets of hair straighteners worth £390 before running out of the shop. She even tidies up after her accomplices and continues to distract the staff, discussing a new hairdo. She's here. The officers believe she's a drug addict. And it seems to come as a bit of a shock to her when they tell her she's going to be strip searched. It will be as quick as possible, give you as much dignity and that's that. Take your um, bracelet off and your hair out. Is it wrapped in? I know more. Is it wrapped in? In your phone. Come and find me next time because this is ridiculous. Listen, it's nothing personal, right? But we have a duty to look after you and the staff, right? And obviously saying that you would bring anything in, but unfortunately people do. Okay, number five, thank you. Got a sharp on it. Let me get the sharp spin. PC Rachel Sparrett found a needle on the suspect. She admitted being an accomplice to the shoplifting because she was caught on camera. Officers have now spent hours searching for the washing powder shoplifter. Hello, it's the police. Can you come to the door, please? They've spoken to his family. It seems his drug addiction and criminal record are taking their toll. He's uh, really at a very low ebb at the moment through uh, drugs. Um, I've just spoken to uh, his auntie, who's very concerned about him. Uh, she said that uh, he's becoming a bit of a victim. People are following him around, and uh, some of those people have assaulted him in the past and uh, taken his money from him. And she said that somebody even took his trainers off him the other day. So he's quite vulnerable, and obviously we'll bear that in mind uh, when we come to arrest him and give him uh, all the uh, help and support necessary. Finally, officers track him down at a local soup kitchen. Michael, to give you full details, mate, obviously I'm arrested on suspicion of three shopliftings. I've been seeing your dad this morning, he's a little bit worried about you, as, as was your auntie. So when you do get out, go and have a word with your auntie, because she's dead worried about you, mate. Are you OK? So you have got people there that care for you, haven't you? you know what's prison now. Catching thieves on camera is helping stem the tide of rising crime on the high street. But it reveals that those responsible are often repeat offenders. For cops and criminals, it can feel like a revolving door. It is a vicious cycle. Somebody goes uh, to court, doesn't get a custodial sentence, then, then comes back out and, and the, the problems that they faced that made them commit the theft in the first place are still there. They still have that addiction to something or they still have the uh, low income or they still have uh, a number of mouths to feed so have to go out and, and commit further offences. It was a little bit tearful and a bit, uh, a bit upset and I, I think he's um, it's mainly because of his dependency on, on drugs and uh, how he's feeling about that. It's just sad, but if he's going to change, it's, uh, it's up to him. He'll get all the support and help necessary to do that. And uh, I think he's resigned himself to the fact that he'll be going back to prison. He's uh, telling me he's come out of prison in June.